Hey, welcome back to YT Finance, and this is the channel where I went to business school so you didn't need to, and today we are talking about the best stocks to buy, as well as the latest stock market news updates that investors need to know about. With that being said, go ahead and annihilate that like button right now, subscribe if you are new, comment down below your thoughts about any or all of these stories, and with that being said, let's get right into it. Recently, stocks fell after investors received a hotter than anticipated inflation report. This ended up causing many investors to sell off a lot of their shares in various stocks, and that's why we see the major indexes falling right now, which would include the NASDAQ, the SP500, as well as the Dow Jones. In my personal opinion, I actually use this as a good buying opportunity to buy ETFs such as ticker symbol VTI and ticker symbol VOO, so I would highly recommend you do research into those ETFs because for me, they have given me great value, especially when I buy into them on weakness in the general stock market. But before we move on to the best stocks to buy, let's quickly go over the latest stock market news updates. I want to start off by actually correcting the initial story in our last video, because this article says, and I quote, President Biden came out against the the planned sale of U.S. steel to Japan's Nippon Steel. Because he says it is vital for it to remain an American steel company that is domestically owned and operated, end quote. And honestly, I actually agree with him here. I want companies who are in the United States to stay U.S. owned and operated companies. So honestly, I think this is a pretty good move, and this should actually ignite the share price of U.S. steel. So I wanted to make that correction from our last video before moving on to Under Armour, which is a sports apparel company. The reason why Under Armour is in the news today is because they recently announced that their founder, Kevin Plank, is returning as the company's CEO. And despite this good news, the share price actually plummeted. Lastly, for stock market news, you should know that Amazon, ticker symbol AMZN, which is a company that I personally hold in my portfolio, is hosting its first big spring sale. Essentially, there is going to be a load of discounts across their entire store, which will be eligible to more than just Prime members. And this is going to last between more March 20th to March 25th. So if you do any shopping on Amazon, I would recommend you look further into this story because you could end up getting a very sweet deal. But because we are investors, this should positively impact Amazon's AMZN share price. So I would love to hear your thoughts about this down below in the comments. Next up, let's talk about an elite strategist who believes that the S&P 500 index is quote, bizarrely overvalued and how it could come crashing down by 49% as a recession sets in. So let's talk about it. According to B. Riley Wealth Management's chief investor strategist, he believes that the S&P 500 will sink to its lowest level since the pandemic. Therefore, he is sounding the alarm because he believes that the stock market bubble is about to burst and that investors need to look out for this. According to the article, he is cautioning against putting money into the market right now, noting that stocks often surge before a recession hits and then promptly plunge. To add some context, this chief strategist believes that we are in an AI bubble right now and he believes that this bubble will pop and be short-lived. Lived. But let's continue with the quote. The quote says that bubbles can pop suddenly and disastrously because they are inflated by emotion and momentum, not built on fundamentals such as earnings or economic growth. Now, don't get me wrong, I do understand what he's saying, but I personally don't think we are in an AI bubble. However, I do think that the general stock market could pull back pretty aggressively, but I do not think we are headed for a recession. But with that being said, let's continue with the article because he does give some evidences about why he believes the general stock market will crash into a recession. So let's talk about it. First, he says that the Buffett indicator is over 180%, which is not good, and this could signal a recession is coming. Essentially, this quote-unquote Buffett indicator suggests that the U.S. stock market is heavily overvalued right now compared to the general size of the economy, and therefore, the general stock market will need to pull back. This strategist also highlights that Warren Buffett himself at Berkshire Hathaway has amassed around $168 billion worth of cash and liquid assets right now in instead of using this to invest into the general stock market. Essentially, he's saying, if the stock market was so great right now, why isn't Warren Buffett buying in? But instead, we don't see him buying in, we actually see him holding on to his cash right now. He then goes on to say, and I quote, when the smart money is selling out as the market is hitting record highs, they are telling us something, end quote. However, here's my response to all of this. First, the Buffett indicator has been wrong many times before, and I suggest that it could be wrong again. The simple fact is that the stock market could pull back, and that would adjust just the Buffett indicator without a full-on recession, so I really don't see this as good evidence for his position. Secondly, he brings up Warren Buffett.
Buffett in regards to Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway amassing a record $168 billion worth of cash and liquid assets instead of investing this money. However, my response to that is that Berkshire Hathaway has been amassing this for quite a while through ups and downs. So Berkshire Hathaway just enjoys having a lot of cash on hand, and it doesn't really have anything to do with the economy in particular. This is just the way Berkshire Hathaway runs, and they enjoy a lot of money and liquid assets on their balance sheet. So again, this is not good evidence for his position, in my opinion. Next up, he cites Jeff Bezos, Mark Zuckerberg, and Jamie Dimon, who are from Amazon, Meta Platforms, and JP Morgan, respectively. He cites that these bigwigs are selling stock and company shares. However, if we look at the history of their buying and selling, they sell shares all the time, almost every single year. But yet, every single year, we haven't had a recession. They are selling stock because they want money. Again, this is nothing out of the ordinary. However, I will agree with his last point, because when smart money is selling out of the market completely after it hits record highs, then this should tell retail investors something. But as of right now, I really don't see this happening on a large scale. Overall, I actually think the economy is pretty strong right now, and the stock market will reflect this. Now, please remember that I said that I do believe that the general stock market could undergo a correction, but I don't think they are going to undergo a full-on recession, and that would be the difference between myself and this strategist. But I'd love to hear your thoughts down below in the comments about this. Next up, let's talk about stocks to buy, which would include Micron Technology stock, which according to this one analyst believes it could surge to $150 per share. So let's talk about it. According to a Citigroup analyst, they believe that Micron Technologies MU stock could surge from $93 up to $150 per share, which would equate to a 61% jump in their share price, which is pretty hefty. According to this article, he believes that Micron will beat their upcoming earnings expectations. And he also believes that they will raise their future guidance for quarter two as soon as next Wednesday. Micron is a technology company which I personally hold in my portfolio, and they are mainly involved with making DRAM, or D-R-A-M, and right now the DRAM prices look very good. We also have to remember that Micron is shipping a lot of high-priced, high-bandwidth memory chips, also known as HBMs, to customers which are ordering AI systems from NVIDIA. So success for NVIDIA will be success for Micron, and we've already seen the immense success of NVIDIA stock, and Micron could be shortly behind them. However, there is a problem here, because Micron probably won't be profitable this year, but their earnings could race past $10 per share by 2026, which is great news. And according to the City Analyst, he believes that this company deserves a 15 times multiple for their earnings thus equating to $150 per share. Overall, I am not as bullish on this company as this analyst. However, I do personally own a Micron in my personal portfolio, and I do believe there is a future upside left in this company over the next 12 months. So if you want to do more research into a company, I would highly recommend you looking further into Micron. Next up, let's talk about Rivian stock, which is a startup electric vehicle company, and one analyst actually upgraded this company. So we're going to talk about them. Rivian Automotive, ticker symbol R-I-V-N, recently impressed investors when it revealed both its second and third generation electric vehicles. This initially caused positive momentum in their share price, but after that, they actually gave back most, if not all, of these gains. But when we zoom out and look at their overall share price, we know that this company's shares have fallen by around 50% just in 2024. However, this analyst recently upgraded this company, and I'll tell you why. Rivian's second generation electric vehicle will be a mid-sized SUV, which is priced $30,000 lower than Rivian's full-sized R1S. This vehicle will cost around $45,000, and you can get it even cheaper if you have various tax credits. The best part about this is that this electric vehicle is relatively cheap compared to their competition, and shipments of this vehicle will begin in early 2026. Due to this positive news, a Piper Sandler analyst increased his price target from $15 up to $21 per share, and this would represent a nearly 100% increase from the share's current share price. But this is not all we have to look forward to, because while the company is growing their consumer base, they are also growing their overall commercial customer base. A few commercial companies actually buy electric vehicle delivery vans from Rivian, one of them being Amazon. So this was a huge contract, and that's why the author of this article believes that this company is a buying opportunity right now. For me personally, I currently have a hold rating on Rivian, but only time will tell, and I'd love to hear your thoughts down below about whether or not you hold this company in your portfolio. Next up, let's talk about Marvel stock to determine whether or not they are a good buying opportunity right now. So let's get right into it. Marvel Technology, ticker symbol MRVL, recently saw its share price reach a new 52-week high of $85.76 on March 7th. This record was set just before their fiscal fourth quarter earnings results, and even though the company was running up before that, they did pull back slightly after the earnings results. 
The main reason why Marvel is in the news is because this is a phenomenal artificial intelligence stock to buy in my opinion, and here's why. The AI market is expected to expand from $306 billion currently to $739 billion by 2030. This gives a huge growth runway for a multitude of various artificial intelligence stocks, which is one of the many reasons why I don't think we are actually in an AI bubble. However, I do believe that the market is slightly overvalued right now, but this will not stop me from continuously investing into solid fundamental companies and my favorite mutual funds ETFs and index funds. But right now, I want to perform a fair examination in regards to Marvel's share price to determine whether or not this is a good long-term investment. First, let's understand how Marvel's business is connected to artificial intelligence. For starters, this company focuses on building components which are used in technology infrastructure. These products would include routers, ethernet switches, and digital signal processors which are employed in data centers. All of these products are very important when we talk about AI because these products help to transmit massive amounts of data. However, there is a few problems that you need to be aware of before you make an investment in this company, and here they are. First, Marvel operates in the hardware business, which is a cyclical business, so we are going to see a lot of volatility and a lot of ups and downs. On top of that, Marvel estimates that their quarter one revenue will be lower than what they brought in for the previous year over the same time period, which is not very positive. And then lastly, I think this is the biggest problem, is that Marvel has a growing net loss. To put this into perspective, they had a net loss of $15.4 million, which is not too shabby, but recently they brought in a net loss of 392 .6 seven million dollars, which is a huge increase in the wrong direction. But there is hope here, because the CEO himself had to say the following, and I quote, While we are forecasting soft demand impacting consumer, carrier infrastructure, and enterprise networking in the near term, we expect revenue declines in these end markets to be behind us after the first quarter. He goes on to say, and we project a recovery in the second half of the fiscal year, end quote. So essentially he's saying that the first half of this year is going to be pretty rough, but after, in the second half of the year, that's when this company is truly going to shine. As an investor, this gives us a great buying opportunity, because in the first half of the year, this allows you to accumulate shares at a relatively cheap share price if you can stomach the volatility and the share price downtrending. But after that, that's when we're going to see value return to us as a shareholder. Therefore, if the CEO is correct, Marvel could see a significant significant revenue increase over the next few quarters after the first half of the year. After that, they should continue generating a strong sales in the second half of the year, which is why at minimum Marvel should be at least on a watch list for you. So I'd love to hear your thoughts about this company down below in the comments. Now let's talk about Ginkgo Bioworks, ticker symbol DNA, which is one of Kathy Wood of ARK Invest's favorite stocks. Kathy Wood of ARK Invest has consistently invested into Ginkgo Bioworks, ticker symbol DNA, by adding it to her ARK Innovation ETF. This this company merges biopharma, biotechnology, and artificial intelligence, as well as laboratory robotics all in one single company. However, hear me out when I say that this company is extremely risky, so please be careful. This company has the goal of becoming a bio foundry, and here's what that means. Essentially, it will take designs for customized biological outputs like proteins or cells and then implement a tailored manufacturing process that results in customers receiving those outputs at industrial scale. To put this into English, they essentially engineer various biological stuff such as proteins and cells and then they give it to their customers. From that point, the customers can really do whatever they want with these proteins or cells from that point onwards. But in essence, they are essentially a bioengineering company. Ginkgo Bioworks has already shown itself as a capable player, considering that they have worked with Novo Nordisk as well as Pfizer. In fact, they are working on a plethora of various programs across many companies, to where in 2023, they added 78 new programs to bring their total to around 162. However, the big problem with this company is that they do not have stable revenues because the revenue fluctuate dramatically and the company is not profitable right now. Therefore, according to the article, if Ginkgo Bioworks cannot achieve the economies of scale that management believes they can, then there is little reason to think that it can survive or be a good investment over the long term. In my personal opinion, I would much rather wait for this company to prove themselves, either in regards to the revenue or profitability, before making an investment in this company. Therefore, always make sure to do your own research before you make any investment decision. Now, moving right along here, let's talk about a United Airline plane which lost an external panel mid-flight. This is going to be bad for both United Airlines as well as whoever made this plane. And shocker there, Boeing made this plane. So let's get right into it. According to the article, a 
United Airlines flight that took off from San Francisco International Airport on Friday morning landed in Oregon with a missing external panel, according to those familiar with this story. The airline identified the missing part as the wing-to-body fairing. Essentially, this belongs on the underside of the aircraft where the wing meets the aircraft body. Clearly, this was bad news for United Airlines, but it was even worse news for Boeing because this was a Boeing 737-800 plane which had 139 passengers on board. United Airlines then came out with a statement which says that they are thoroughly examining the plane to perform repairs and conduct an investigation to know how the damage occurred. What's even more strange is that investigators believed that if this part was loose, it would have actually ripped off sometime during the takeoff. However, United Airlines searched their premises and could not find the part. And in my personal opinion, it actually seems like somebody took off this particular piece. If you recall, we have seen a plethora of reports flooding in about negativity surrounding Boeing. So now I'm starting to think that some of these actually may be purposeful. I find it very odd that all of a sudden, all of these Boeing aircrafts are experiencing all of these problems that didn't happen throughout the many years in which these airlines have used these aircrafts. It's almost like this is being done intentionally to make Boeing share price go down. However, I don't want to go too far down that rabbit hole because that gets into deep conspiracies and things like that, but I do find all of these occurrences all of a sudden very strange. So I'd love to hear your thoughts about this down below. Lastly, let's talk about the upcoming catalysts that you as an investor need to be aware of heading into next week, starting off with earnings on Monday, March 18th. Some notable companies which will report earnings on Monday, March 18th would include Stoneco, Comtech, and Science Applications. For context, I have Stoneco on a watch list because I actually kind of like this company and I just nibble at them here and there. As for the other two companies, I don't really care about them, but I just thought you should know that because I want to be transparent with you on what I do and don't own. Next up on Tuesday, March 19th, we can look forward to NVIDIA's GTC conference, which should act as a positive catalyst for the share price. However, now I'm starting to think that this GTC conference will actually act as a negative catalyst because nothing can actually live up to investors' expectations that they have set for this conference. And ultimately, this could reflect negatively on their share price, but only time will tell. After that, on Thursday, March 21st, we can look forward to other companies releasing their earnings, which would include a slew of fantastic companies such as Nike, FedEx, Accenture, Lululemon, and Darren Restaurants. But the biggest treat in my opinion on that day would be that Reddit is expecting to start IPO trading at that time on March 21st. So that is something that investors should look forward to. And then lastly, on Friday, March 22nd, we see Merck, ticker symbol MRK. And I'm going to be watching them because we could see some FDA action, which should positively impact their overall share price. But if this goes south, it could be pretty catastrophic. But overall, I'm going to keep you updated on all of these stories. So with that being said, go and annihilate that like button right now. Subscribe if you are new. Comment your thoughts down below about any or all of these stories. And with that being said, I will see you in the next YT video.